first girl. She was just beautiful, that little girl so full of life. But as fast as it started, it was over. The movie career and Heather's life. First, we were told she had the flu, then Crohn's disease, then some mysterious disorder. Then all signs of life just stopped. What happened to Heather? According to her family, Heather's death need not have happened. Our Bob Martin reports. They're here. Heather O'Rourke, one of Hollywood's symbols of innocence and good. During her brief acting career, she survived the fantasy horrors of three poltergeist films. But the budding star allegedly fell victim to one of life's real horrors, medical misdiagnosis. The young actress died earlier this year from an illness that her mother says if detected earlier, her life could have been saved. I think all your life, you think you're supposed to trust a doctor. You know, and you've gone through so much, so many people checking different things, x-rays and stuff, and, you know, they all say, okay, this is what she has, so you accept it. And then um, when something goes wrong, it's hard to believe that they could have made a mistake. Kathleen O'Rourke claims that a medical mistake led to the death of her 12-year-old daughter, Heather, on February 1st. She recently filed a malpractice suit against the California hospital, claiming that one of the main reasons for the suit is to find out what led to Heather's death. Now, the lawsuit may take years to reach a settlement, and during that time, Kathleen will have to relive the happy times with Heather, but she'll also have to relive the agony of the young star's death. Heather lived with her mother, stepfather, and older sister in a quiet apartment complex in Lakeside, California. Kathleen says Heather began her acting career at the age of five when director Steven Spielberg first saw her and said, well, she looked a little too young, but he saw something in her. Heather was kind of a perfectionist. She was kind of quiet, but yet she'd have this kind of sense of humor that all of a sudden came out of the blue. Her sister was doing Pennies from Heaven at MGM, and Heather was there with me. And we went to lunch, and Steven Spielberg approached her and said, would you like to do a movie? And she said, I don't know. And he said, well, how old are you? She said, I'm five. And he says, well, you need to be sick. She says, fine. <laughs> she just wanted to eat her sandwich. He said, well, okay, I'll interview you. She said, fine. We went into the interview, and Stephen had these stuffed animals. And it was a pink pig and a purple fish or something. He said she had to be frightened. Well, she laughed and laughed and giggled. And he told her the next day, he said, well, you're too young. She said, fine. <laughs> we didn't know who Stephen was, and then... He said there was something about her, so he asked her to come back again. And we brought a script from Sesame Street about the Cookie Monster. And, well, I didn't think I'd have to go in there with her, but I had to go in there with her and do the script with her. And then Stephen said, well, that was good, Heather. He said, can you cry? And she said, yeah. He said, can you scream? She kept screaming and screaming. She finally said, I really can't do her anymore. And he said, fine. He said, you can go now. And the next day he told him the commissary she had the job. After Poltergeist, I just kind of thought it was a fluke. You know, she did a movie, that's fine. Because Heather's real, real quiet and very shy. And Happy Days was interested in her. And um, she went for several interviews and said, we'd like, you know, Heather to be on the show, but can she handle a live audience? Well, I wasn't too sure if she could. And um, I asked Heather, and she said, I'm sure, no problem. And I said, sure, Heather. <laughs> and anyhow, um, they said, okay, well, you know, go with Heather and... Um, I said, are you nervous the first time she had to do a live show? She said, no, she was fine, but I was a wreck. And um, she went through it and fine. she was fine. I think the live audience eventually gave her confidence to speak up and not to be, you know, afraid of the people. Off camera, mm -hmm. what were some of her hobbies? And she liked to lights. swim, and she liked to read, and she liked to play miniature golf. I think that was her favorite. She used to ride a bicycle, and she had an ATC that she used to ride. She has a cabbage doll collection, and um, she has a video camera and stuff, and I think she was um, starting to think along the line of directing. She was starting to practice on all of us at home. He bought was for my stuff. Oh, jeez. Early in 1987, Heather became ill, and doctors at Kaiser Hospital in Southern California eventually diagnosed her as having Crohn's disease. That's an inflammation of the intestine. 
She was given drugs to treat her illness, and the effects of the drugs allegedly puffed up the young star's cheeks, as shown here in these production photos from Poltergeist 3. Had the completed shooting on that film last June. But six months later, Kathleen says her daughter became ill again on Super Bowl Sunday, 1988. Unable to keep anything in her stomach, she crawled into bed with her parents that night, and the next morning, February 1st, Kathleen helplessly watched her daughter being pulled away by the hand of death. We know she's breathing real heavy. And um, I got to the phone, I just called any number that was nearby, and I says, I got a little girl here that her fingers are blue, and she's breathing heavily, I said, bring her right in. So I said, Heather, go get your clothes on, I'll get mine on, and in a matter of, I guess, probably 30 seconds, uh, she hollered, oh, Mom, and she'd fallen on the floor. And she was kind of... She was coherent and talking, but she was kind of, um, her face was kind of turned, you know, and kind of listless, you know, that kind of a look. And, um, my husband called the paramedics. And, um, they came and said, you need oxygen. And she says, I don't need no oxygen. I'm fine. They said, yes, you know, we need to put the oxygen on you. And, um, they said, you're feeling bad? She says, well, just a little. And then they prepared her and got on the gurney and went out the door. And then, um, outside the door, she threw up and... I wiped her mouth. She said, I'm sorry, Mom, you know. And um, they took her to the ambulance, and she suffered cardiac arrest. Heather was resuscitated at a local hospital and then flown by helicopter to Children's Hospital and Health Center in San Diego. Doctors there say Heather did not have Crohn's disease and died from a narrowing in her bowel that could have been treated earlier on and may have saved the girl's life. L.A. lawyer Sanford Gage is representing Kathleen in her lawsuit against Kaiser Permanente Hospital. The charge is medical misdiagnosis. The x-rays themselves show that the bowel was so obstructed that even if the obstruction in some way were misread as due to Crohn's disease, it still was the kind of a condition that in all probability should have been removed surgically and not treated medically. So I believe either way it's a case that, uh, that we should win. We have reviewed the case extensively, and we believe that the diagnosis and the course of action taken by our physicians was entirely appropriate. It's a very complex case, complicated by a number of factors and not given to any simple answers. Mr. Gage confirmed, you know, that she had had that blocked intestine at Children's Hospital had told me and that, you know, with the letter and different things from Kaiser that, you know, they had been wrong and misdiagnosed it which helps me a little bit, you know, understanding that I couldn't have done anything better because I kind of was an overprotective mother to begin with, you know, and you're kind of looking for every little thing that would show a sign of something going wrong, you know. And I think just to know that in my own mind will help me adjust to not having Heather, you know. Heather O'Rourke is buried in the small Westwood, California cemetery. Last Christmas, she bought her mother a necklace, which they split into two halves. Heather's half is buried with her two pieces together say best friends.